Ej, jesi, brate. So, today we're going to talk about a few different things, I think. Uh, first of all, intercoolers, because I have a request for that. Uh, that's like two minutes. We have um, <clears throat> two types of uh, intercoolers that are normal. We have the air air. You send your charge air through the intercooler and the passing air from your when you're driving your car is going through the intercooler as well, but on the other way and that cools the charge air. Air to air intercooler. Very simple and used in everything. The other one is water and air. You still have your charge air through the intercooler, but instead of air cooling it down, you have water cooling it down. Also very commonly used, mostly on newer cars and like all BMWs and Audis that are fairly new has a water to air intercooler because they are compact, efficient and yeah, it's so two types of intercoolers. What intercooler is the one for you? Depends a little bit about power and space and so on. If you have a water to air intercooler, you need some other bits and pieces. You need a water pump and you need some, some kind of water reservoir thing. And, you know, we use normally uh, um, a similar expansion tank that is already in the car. So it looks factory when you have another one next to it. But you can do a little bit however the fuck you want. And so you need power to the, to the electric water pump and you need uh, a water cooler somewhere and some water lines to that water cooler and it's, it's a little bits and pieces but generally speaking a water to air intercooler takes less space than a air to air intercooler so if you are if space is a premium in your car water to air might be a good option or a solution you can also put uh, like on the 606s that has the uh, the intake to the intake, the intake to the in the inlet to the <laughs> to the intake manifold is pointing down. There you can put your water to air intercooler directly on that, and it's like out of the way, and that saves a ton of room in most cars. And then you only have a couple of water hoses to the front and. Uh, and a small water cooler. Normally the water to air intercooler is more efficient. It has less lag and so on. Now you don't, you know, you have this lag one time more or less, you know, you have to fill your system with air and then you, you go. So it really doesn't, the difference is not that big in real life as on paper. If you use a, big ass air to air intercooler or a decently sized or properly sized water to air intercooler it's uh, it's more theoretical than real life you know so that's the intercoolers water to air is more efficient it takes less space but it requires a little bits and pieces that the air to air intercooler doesn't need I don't have to explain the fucking air to air intercooler because you all use them or have them on your car right now. And if you don't, Google a fucking picture, you put it in your front of your car and you run your car. It's that simple. More coils. Is that really the name for all fucking springs? Coil springs? Probably. So, coil springs. I don't know springs that you fucking push together that are in a fucking circular motion 
That's really interesting because this logic is like over the head of everybody in the fucking world. So this is a really stupid example, but you know, we all have to learn something today. And water to air into cool is not one of those things. How a coil works. That's the, the, the thing we're going to learn today. So let's say you have a coil and this has 10 revolutions. Okay. And this is for us metric guys. You other guys, you yes. It doesn't matter, you know. 10 of something is 10 of something. It can be foot pounds. It doesn't matter. This is an example. So you have 10 revolutions of your coil spring. And to compress this 10 centimeters, you need 10 kilos of pressure. And that can be 10 inches and 10 foot pounds. It doesn't fucking matter. So what happens when we cut a coil? This is so fucking stupid, but I have to do these videos. So if you cut one revolution of your coil, what happens to your coil? Uh, no, it's not Tinder. It was another message. So 10 centimeters, 10 kilos of pressure. If you cut one revolution of your coil and you apply your 10 kilos of pressure, you will only move the coil nine centimeters because you have nine revolutions left. And one revolution need 10 kilos to move one centimeters. 10 revolutions, 10 centimeters, 10 kilos. That's how a coil spring works. So when you have your Mercedes or Volvo or what the fuck you have, and you cut your coil springs on your car to lower it. And you think, you think it's a little bit bumpy after that. Why the fuck do you think it's bumpy? Because now 10 kilos is 9 centimeters. The coil is harder. It's not harder, but you have fewer revolutions that can compress. You cut another one. 10 kilos is 8 centimeters much harder no it's not fucking harder but you have less revolutions to compress it's really simple logic so that's how a coil spring work you cut the revolution and it becomes stiffer for you feeling wise and this applies to anything that is a coil spring it can be a valve spring it can be the fucking suspension of your car. It can be the spring in your fucking pencil. Is pencil is uh, not the, the pen. So it can be any fucking coil spring. If you cut a revolution off, it will be harder. As long as it's sufficiently tall, of course. On a car, it really doesn't matter because it just goes down. By gravity. So, water to air intercooler versus air to air intercooler. Water to air is more efficient. It is. It takes less space, but it requires some bits and pieces. And you need to think a little bit because you need your water reservoir and you need your water to air cooler. And you need lines and a pump that works and the pump is never dry and so on. So you have to use your brain a little bit. But if you just do that, it's a really sweet setup. You can also combine. So you can have a small water to air uh, intercooler. And then you can have a small normal air to air intercooler. You know? So it's, you can combine it for the space you have in your car. And that is really fucking good. Coil springs, you cut the revolution and it feels harder. Because it is harder. But 
every revolution is the same fucking stiffness. So, I think that is the only lessons we have today. And please don't take my fucking videos literally, because most of the time is like roughly. And you get that, right? You see? Now the flies are coming again. I'm not going to do this, that in this video. So, it's not literally, it is roughly. And if you don't get it, you don't get it. You can watch another fucking YouTube channel. We we'll see you in a couple of days.